afternoon, everybody. So this is going to be a little bit shorter today than the past few days. Um, I am headed out to Europe with the secretary. I think several of you are with us, and um, we've got to get to Andrews with our suitcases, which are just sitting right outside this door for me. So um, of course, it's important for me to see all of you before I left. So thank you for having me again. So one thing that I want to bring to your attention before we get started today, uh, yesterday, Secretary Pompeo spoke at the beginning uh, excuse me, spoke at the opening of an exciting new exhibit here in the United States Diplomacy Center. This exhibit celebrates the 40-year anniversary of the establishment of the Bureau of Consular Affairs and tells the story of our timeless commitment to serving the American people. Or people. Consular officers have served across the globe and through centuries dating from before the signing of the U.S. Constitution down to today. Consular Affairs carries out one of the department's most important missions, looking out for the welfare and safety of Americans overseas. They also provide essential passport and visa services to millions of customers every year, facilitating travel and safeguarding our national security. As many of you know, or if you don't know, you do now, I am a Navy Reserve officer, and I was actually fascinated to learn that the Consular Jack flag on display in the exhibit is carried on every U.S. Navy ship still to this day. It's a testament to the long-standing partnership between the State Department and our colleagues at Defense. If any of you in the bullpen haven't seen the exhibit yet, I strongly encourage you to reach out to our consular press team for a chance to tour it. It's very special. Matt. When does it, it go to? Oh, the end date? Oh, yeah, yeah. good question. You better, you better hurry and check it out just in case. Yeah. Just in case you Can miss I, it. Um, start with, um, this is a kind of technical question, but I asked okay. it of you a couple days ago. And you didn't have an answer, but Which one? now Brian it's about Iran and the oil sanctions. Oh. So we Brian, didn't get back to you on that. No. Uh, okay. I don't, well, if someone did, I missed it, okay. which is possible. But anyway, Brian Hook spoke to this this morning in a telephone briefing that I didn't know about, but I didn't either. Neither, either yeah. here nor there. It makes two of us. He said that, or at least according to reports mm -hmm. of this call, he said that China and India. Um, and potentially other countries have been allowed to continue to take delivery of oil from Iran after the sanctions mm -hmm. waivers were not renewed. So, uh, so am I provided? I think, at least according to what I can understand of what he said, is that provided it was paid for before the wa the waivers expired. But isn't this, and this was my question before, isn't the taking delivery, the mere act of taking delivery, even if it's already been paid for, um, a violation of sanctions? And if it is, why aren't there any sanctions being imposed? So a couple of things. I think to, um, to speak directly to what he said, I need to review the transcript, and I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I know that I will see you in Switzerland, and I will follow up with you either in person there or, okay. or an email before on that. I'd like to read the transcript um, to make sure that, it, that I fully understand what Brian said. Uh, but I do know that the Secretary's policy and the President's policy is that we're going to zero, um, and that, of course, there are no extensions uh, of these uh, waivers. Um, and that, that remains our policy and any technicalities related to that. I'd be happy to, to read what Brian said um, and to discuss this with, with him to make sure that I'm conveying that accurately. But I think it's, uh, it's important to note where we were uh, a year ago and even at the beginning of this administration. A lot of people said that unilateral U.S. sanctions would never work. They have. Uh, a lot of people said that the world would not comply uh, with our campaign. They have. Uh, European businesses have been um, some of the most aggressive, actually, in following these, d despite what some in their governments have done. European businesses have been at the forefront, corporations, of getting out. Uh, European banks are complying. So uh, we see the compliance with U.S. sanctions regarding Iran writ large to be one of the most successful things that this administration and that the State Department has done. Yes. What's the question? That there is no extension, including Iraq? Are you referring to the electricity waiver that we yeah. discussed yesterday? As I said yesterday, the secretary hasn't made a decision on that, but I'll let you know when they do. Christina. Um, I was wondering on that topic, has mm -hmm. anybody here talked to India or confirmed reports that India might be trying to skirt the, uh, the oil sanctions, and is there any kind of comment from the State Department on that? Has it been addressed? 
I think I spoke about that yesterday. I, I was I was asked about you know India specifically yesterday, and and of course following up on Matt's question as well. Uh, our our policy uh, remains that everyone has to go to zero. Um, that's the policy, and you know we have been working of of course in speaking with uh, allies uh, around the world. We remain confident that energy markets are well uh, well supplied. I didn't check the price of oil before I came out, but I know it's consistently uh, been trading at uh, actually a few dollars lower given given the day than before. Before uh, we withdrew from the JCPOA, which is another criticism that ended up being uh, untrue about the maximum pressure campaign. No, I, I understand, and that's yeah. what we did say yesterday. But I was wondering if it is, you know, if you have an inclination that that is the fact, is that a concern of yours? Have you reached out to, you know, have, have people here talk to their counterparts in the in Modi's government to see if this is in fact true, or is it like something that you're working on? Or well, we work with our uh, partners, our allies around the world every single day on a variety of issues, um, and I think that we say both publicly and privately that we're going to zero. There are no ex uh, exemptions. This is the president's policy. This is the secretary's policy, and we can say it publicly. We can say it privately. Whatever it takes for people to get it, and we certainly appreciate everyone that's complying around the world. Yeah. Saeed, how are you? Thank you. Morgan, thank you for taking my question. Sure. I have a very quick question for you. In light of the dissolving of the Knesset uh, yesterday, yes. do you still think that uh, the Bahrain conference will go on or should it go mm -hmm. on? Uh, is it likely that we have another rollout of the peace plan? Yes. Because I remember Secretary Pompeo the last time that we will roll it out after the Israeli election. Right. So, um, of course, this conference is led by uh, Jared Kushner and Jason Greenblatt at the White House. Uh, we are not anticipating any changes, as we discussed yesterday, except for June 25th and 26th, I believe. Um, and so that's, I don't know if I fully answered your question, but we anticipate that it's still going on. Okay, but there has been no statement on uh, the content or the, the talks that were held between Mr. Kushner and Mr. Netanyahu. This so I believe that that Jared Kushner made some pu well. First of all, I think I'd refer you to the state, uh, the White House. Um, I think that he made some public comments about uh, his meetings this morning, um, and they should have readouts. Uh, and so we will. I'll be happy to follow up on that with you. But I believe that I at least have one statement here from from his meeting with um, Israeli Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu. So I think there are some public things out there for you. Yes. Hi. Um, yesterday, Ambassador Bolton said Iran was almost certainly behind the sabotage of four ships off mm -hmm. the UAE coast and an undisclosed attempt a few days before that to attack the Saudi port of the Anbu. Mm -hmm. Is that your view as well? And could you provide some details about the attempted attack at the Anbu? So um, what the Secretary has said about this publicly uh, several times is he said that it's quite possible that Iran is behind these attacks, um, especially given all of the regional conflicts and, and threats. We, of course, continue to watch the situation um, closely, uh, but we don't have any announcements to make about the outcome of the investigation. We will leave that to uh, the Emiratis and the Saudis. And related to mm -hmm. that, Saudi Arabia is hosting emergency uh, summits of the Arab and Gulf states mm -hmm. today. What's your view of those meetings? One second. Uh, yes, so I think we talked about, Sean asked me about this yesterday. Um, we always uh, welcome Saudi Arabia's initiative to host GCC and the Arab League to discuss Iranian threats to the region. It's clearly vitally important. Um, and we will continue to say that Gulf unity is essential to confronting Iran, uh, to confronting their influence, to, counter to countering terrorism writ large, um, and of course, ensuring a prosperous future for the Gulf. Hey, Sean. That's, thank you. We'll go, move on. Thank you. Sure. Uh, a different topic. Uh, sure. Colombia. Um, yes. The Supreme Court of Colombia uh, has issued an order for the release of Jesus Santrich, mm -hmm. um, who is wanted by the United States on allegations mm -hmm. of drug trafficking. This is part of the um, of the peace process with FARC and its transition to political mm -hmm. party. Uh, what does the U.S. make of it? Does it see a mm -hmm. finality in the Supreme Court decision? Does it still want uh, his extradition? Well, you know, of course, uh, Colombia is a close partner with us on, on many areas, especially Venezuela. As many of you know, and if Christina was with us and others, uh, on the trip that we took to uh, the region, I guess, a month ago at this point, um, in which we were we were there, I was there with the secretary in Cucatau, uh, and we were watching our aid shipments, our U.S. aid shipments that just, you know, remain seated there because Maduro refuses <laughs> to let them into the country. So I say that to say that we have a very, very deep uh, relationship with Colombia. 
Colombia. And of course, as goes for any thriving democracy like Colombia, we would respect the decision of the court. Um, but we did make a statement on this, our embassy in Bogota did on May 16th, and I just want to refer back to that. Uh, but just to remind everyone that we are, of course, fully aware uh, by the decision of the Supreme Court. Um, this certainly has not escaped our attention, but we do find this decision regrettable. The United States has complied with the requirements for extradition as established with Colombia. And our request established that the offenses with which uh, Mr. Santrick is charged took place after December 1st, 2016. Um, and the charges against him, I think you're well aware, are, are very uh, severe, conspiring to ship over 10,000 kilos of cocaine. Um, so again, we do find this decision regrettable, um, and we, views, we view an appeal um, as essential and urgent. Okay. Hi. How are you? I'm sorry. Did someone else have Columbia? Just on no. Central America. Okay. I'll come right back to you. Thanks. Um, can you provide any update on the announcement earlier this year about the State Department that they would that you would cut funding to the Northern Triangle countries? Um, whether or not that that money has actually been cut, if anything's gone ahead. I don't have anything new for that on you today. I think the, what I, I think that we released uh, some statements on this earlier this year, and the, the most recent statement that I can recall came from the secretary in Colombia. I actually think it was in response to a question by Christina. Um, that was probably a month ago. So if you can't find that transcript, we'll pull it for you. I think that's the most recent statement. Hi. Thank you, Morgan. If sure. I may, uh, I would like to ask a human rights related question. Okay. Um, in China, so this year marks the 30th anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Yes. Where peaceful demonstrators were violently suppressed. They were massacred. In and around mm -hmm. Tiananmen in, on June 4th, 1989. Mm -hmm. So any reference to the Tiananmen um, Square uh, crackdown has been systematically right. censored in China. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we saw reports, uh, human rights reports uh, indicate that activists, uh, police have detained, mm -hmm. police house arrest yes. and, and threatened dozens of activists who are seeking to mark the anniversary. Does the State Department have anything on this? This is not mm -hmm. just any anniversary. Absolutely. This is a generation of three decades. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. We've, of course, seen those reports. Um, it couldn't be more troubling. I mean, as, a, as I said when you started your question, uh, we, sh we shouldn't forget that this was a full-on massacre of peaceful, peaceful protesters um, that occurred. We remember the tragic loss of innocent lives, and as we do every year, and we will again this year, express our deep sorry, sorrow to the families um, who are still grieving. But I think the U.S. Uh, has called for, and we will continue to call for, as have others in the international community, a full public accounting for those killed, detained, and missing. Uh, we want those released uh, who have been jailed for striving to keep the memory of Tiananmen Square alive and to end the continued harassment and demonstra uh, of demonstration participants and their families. Um, it's uh, it's a, a systematic, uh, the Communist Party in China's abuse, uh, horrific abuses, um, and I think it's one of the more sad, tragic things that we're seeing going on in the world today. So thank you for bringing it up. Yes. Sure, stay on China. Let's stay. If anyone else has a question, let's keep in Asia for a little bit, and then we can switch. And I only have a few more minutes. I'm sorry. I do have to go to um, the airport. I don't want to get left. <laughs> Thank you for taking my yeah. question. Um, yesterday, you, you and also you mentioned the Secretary Pompeo's um, comments on Huawei. I'm wondering, yes. how do you respond to the criticism about the actually almost all giant technology companies in the United States have connections with the U.S. government, and there is mass surveillance in the United States. How do we reconcile mm -hmm. with those arguments? And well, we comply with the law, I mean, of course, right? And unfortunately, uh, Huawei and other uh, technology companies based in China have to comply with their law. And their law, of course, you know, states that they have to turn over uh, their technology. We, I mean, listen, we could go into detail. I think I probably gave too long of an answer yesterday talking about the forced transfer of technology, among other um, uh, violations uh, uh, as it relates to Huawei. They didn't get barred or banned in the national uh, defense authorization for no reason, right? I mean, they got it. They've allegedly sold intellectual property. They violated U.S. laws. They've negatively impacted our national security, and um, I think I gave a pretty detailed answer on that. So, the White House report in 2012, which is after 18 month investigation, the mm -hmm. White House ordered a report actually saying there's no evidence found of Huawei spying in the United okay, States. Okay, that's 2012. It's 2019. But Clearly, the world, the world has changed. The world has changed. 
Let's move on. So yes. I have a, I have two questions, one on the Golan Heights and one on Iran. Uh, Fadi Mansour, Al Jazeera. Uh, so today, I believe uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, said that mm -hmm. uh, he received the map from President Trump, signed by President Trump, that shows... He received a what? I didn't hear you A map. A map, okay. Yeah, signed by President Trump mm -hmm. that shows the Golan Heights as part of Israel. Did the State Department update the status of the Golan Heights? Uh, people who are born there, are they now considered... Uh, Israeli citizens or part of Israel? What is what is the latest on the guidelines inside the State Department? I know we have for sure updated the map, uh, the maps. Matt Lee can testify to that because he asked us about it. Um, and let me get back to you on anything uh, additional. On Iran, and I'm more. sorry, uh, uh, what time is it? 1.30? I can take one, one more from Leslie and then we got to go. I'm sorry, guys, I'll be briefing Thursday when I get back. And as you know, I'm trying to make this as, as often as possible when I'm here, I've committed to that to all of you. I think I think and hope I'm being responsive to all of you over email, whatever you need. Um, so I'm sorry that it's short today. Well, I'll take one more, Leslie, but very, I will be back next very week. Very briefly. Um, yes. On Tuesday, the Central Bank of Venezuela uh, mm -hmm. released economic data, the first time in, uh, in nearly four years, mm -hmm. which was um, surprising given um, that they've been pressured by the IMF to release that. Do you have any reading of, first of all, have you, is there any assessment of that data that was released um, by the user? Number two, what is the explanation, possible explanation for why they would release that at mm -hmm. this time? Uh, I'm aware of that, uh, what you talked about on Tuesday. Um, there may be an assessment. I don't have it with me. I'll follow up for you and get that for you by the end of the day. I'll see you all next Thursday, and thanks to those of you who are coming with us to Europe.